Composting for the home gardener is a game changer, no doubt. However, it can be more complicated than most people want to deal with. Using compost in your vegetable garden can actually make you look like you know what you're doing. It can make somebody that's a novice gardener look like they've been doing it for years. Your plants grow off, you get good yields. You know, it compensates for a lot of things that maybe we didn't do. And there's several reasons why you want to use compost in your vegetable garden. Number one is, it just simply makes your fertilizer work better. The more organic or good compost you got in the soil, the higher your organic content in your soil, the higher your cation exchange value is in your soil. Cation exchange value is a way to measure the way the soil interacts with fertilizers and gets the best utilization out of them. The higher your cation exchange value is, the better the exchange is going to be with your fertilizer and your plant uptake for the fertilizer. So basically, we just want to get as much organic matter, good compost in the soil as we can, and it helps those fertilizers be more readily available to the plant. Number two is moisture, retaining moisture in the soil. The higher our organic matter in our soil is, the better the soil retains moisture. Number three is our plants don't stress. So when we have more organic matter in our soil, our plants are healthier and plants are just like human beings. The healthier we are, the better we fight off infections. So the healthier the plant is, the better it can fight off insect damage, the better it can fight off diseases. So it's pretty simple. Keep that plant nice and healthy and it can fight off insects and diseases. Now there's basically two types of compost for the home gardener that you can do. The traditional bin system, where we stack all our stuff in the bin, we turn it periodically, we put uh, our organic matter in there, we put our nitrogen in there. And for this system, you need two thirds carbon to one third nitrogen. That carbon is what a lot of people call brown and the nitrogen is what a lot of people call green. It can be manures or it can be grass clippings. You have to put these in there, you need to layer them, you stack them up, you need to turn them periodically and you need to have the correct moisture in there to work off good compost. Really and truly to do this correctly, you need meters to read your heat and you need meters to read your humidity to get it right. Now, when it is done right, it turns out to be a great product. And another method is worm composting. Vermiculture, which I consider black gold, is this worm composting here. I have three beds and I started this about two years ago. And what I like about it it is so easy, very low maintenance. It's just basic. You put your worms in there, your scraps, the worms eat the scraps, and then you have compost. One pound of worms can theoretically eat one pound of scraps in 24 hours. That is awesome. To make this worm bed, I recommend just finding something around that you can repurpose. I have two old bathtubs and one plastic container, but you can actually just use a um, plastic storage bin and that'll work fine. Yeah, pretty much what we've used here, we got zero dollars in. The things you need is basically food, water, air, and room for those worms to wiggle. So you need um, your brown, which is your cardboard, newspaper, basically your carbon. You need your green. You need your food, which is food scraps. And you need water and you need air. Now, I don't have any air holes in this. I've got one hole at the bottom that drains the excess water, but I do not have any extra worm holes. So the way I do these is um, I use shredded cardboard or whole cardboard. I use leaves for the brown and shredded newspaper. For the greens, I use my mustard, turnips, um, any type of scraps. Well, here's some carrot tops. For the um, grit, they need grit. I use coffee grounds and eggshells. I do not normally have to add any extra water in here except in the summertime when it's really, really hot. How long does it take to get the worm compost? usually three to six months. And I'll usually just check it weekly. How many worms do you need? 
it's recommended you use one pound of worms per square foot of space. The other question I get is how do you harvest? And that'll be on a future video. Now the way we got into worming uh, <laughs> is we like to fish. So we want to raise our own worms so when we got ready to go fishing that we could just come out here and dig our worms and we didn't have to go to the bait store. But then we got to realizing how well it decomposed and ate up our garden scraps and how well this worked in our raised beds in our small garden. Therefore, that's the reason I've changed my mind. I was skeptical at first because I have always used bulk compost in the past or manures out of my chicken pen, which I continue to do out of my big garden. But for small scale family vegetable gardens, this worm system right here, is a really good system, I think. And there's certain I've changed my mind on it. I mean, you get the benefit, you get the worms, you could feed your chickens or you could use to fish with. But if you add compost and get some worms into your garden while you add that, that's fine too. But it seems to be a great system, not near as finicky, and there's a lot more room for air there and you can still be successful growing compost even though you're not an expert. 